61.1 with minor variation in the wording but no change in the sense. Isaiah 61, reading verse 1, Jesus says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted. What does the next statement say? To do what? Preach what? Deliverance to whom? The captives. Recovering of sight to the blind. To set at liberty them that are bruised. And so Jesus came and one of his missions was to release people from captivity. And the only captivity you and I can be in is the captivity of sin. Jesus Christ can break you from any addiction that's harassing your life tonight. I don't care what it is. I don't mean to sound harsh. I just mean to sound very clear and direct. I don't care what your addiction is, Jesus Christ can break it. That's one of the reasons why he came. If it's smoking, Christ has the power. If it's alcohol, Christ has the power. It is a pornographic addiction, Jesus Christ has the power. It is a sexual addiction, Jesus Christ has the power. If you're addicted to beating your spouse, Jesus Christ has the power to release you. Amen. If it is your desire to be released. Amen. Now let's jump to tonight's message. No law, no life. Our theme is heart to heart. And as you come from night to night, you will understand why that is the theme. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. We're now beginning our tonight's message formally. No law, no life. Genesis 1, reading from verse 1, the Bible says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. God made light. Light falls into a classification of existence, perhaps as you use simple expression. There are several levels at which anything or anyone can exist. Let me explain what I mean. This is a microphone. Does it exist, yes or no? Yes. Is it human, yes or no? no? Does it feel pain, yes or no? no? So it is in a category of existence that is non-living, so it is called inanimate. Now, light is inanimate, but it exists. Are you with me? Amen. Let's go to verse 11 of Genesis chapter 1. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the earth yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass. Now, is grass the same as this microphone? Yes or no? No. Does grass live? Yes. But does grass feel pain as far as we know? No. So while grass is in the classification of a living thing, it is not really a living thing the way an animal is. Where I'm staying, I was just walking on the grounds, breathing some fresh air, such as it is in Southern California. And um, I was walking down the lane, and I saw a black cat. I love cats. And so the cat meowed, and I meowed right back. <laughs> and so he came from his yard, he actually did. And perhaps he belonged to my friends where I'm staying. But he came around the fence and came where I was. And he started rubbing against my leg. I patted him on the head. And he clearly liked it. He began to purr with great delight. And so I walked back up the lane, sat on the steps. He sat at my feet and I patted him. And he purred and he rubbed on my feet. And he slightly bit my finger. And um, <laughs> then I had to go back to my room to re resume my reflection and my preparation for tonight. But that cat enjoyed affection. Are you with me? Amen. But the cat is not a human being. Let's look at animals in creation. Genesis 1, reading from verse 20. And God said, 
Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. So God created living things on the day five, and also on day six, reading from verse 24. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. Now the beasts of the earth, the cattle, the creeping thing, the fowls of the air, the creatures of the sea, they feel, they live, they eat, they reproduce. They're alive at a higher level than plants. So we have non-living things like light, like the firmament. We have living things like grass and trees. Then we have a higher level of living things like the animals that we keep as pets and the wild ones that we see in zoos. Then in verse 26, the Bible says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. I want you to follow me very closely tonight as we proceed with no law, no life. There is something common to everything that God has created. There is something common. It is common to this microphone. Well, he didn't make the microphone, but he made the metal from which the microphone is made. This desk feels nothing, but it came from a tree. Everything that exists was made by God except sin. Somebody say amen. 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 That's ours by right. Whether it's non-living as a stone, or it has a basic form of life as a tree, or a higher form of life as an animal that reproduces and, and needs energy to get from one place to the next, or the highest form of created life on earth, that is human beings, everything created behaves. That's why my original title was Behave Yourself. But I prefer no law, no life. Listen to me again. Someone must have missed what I just said. Don't talk to anyone. You'll distract the person and yourself. Everything God has created behaves. The universe is made up of what? Give me one word. Matter. Santa said matter. All matter behaves. Let me explain. Does water behave the same way as a liquid, yes, uh, as a solid, yes or no? No. no. Come on, the, 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 yes, the, the answer was weak. Yes. Do solids and liquids behave the same way, yes or no? Yes. No. They behave differently. Do solids and gases behave the same way? No. 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 Do gases and liquids behave the same way in every respect? No. The universe is made up of matter. We know matter exists as solid, liquid, and gas. Now some smart person may say plasma. But it, let's say gas. It's an ionized gas, I believe. So solid, liquid, gas. Follow me closely. No law, no life. Are there laws that govern the way gases behave? Yes. Yes. If that were the case, you couldn't transfer oxygen from your alveoli to your bloodstream. All doctors say amen. amen. <laughs> Are there laws that govern the way liquids behave? Yes. yes. Are there laws that govern the way solids behave? Yes. Yes. Now if the universe the cosmos is made up of solids, liquids, gases, or matter, and all matter behaves, and that behavior is directed by law. Which means that the entire universe is run by law. law. This, uh, this floor is not living. You know why I'm not sinking through the floor? Physicists, you can answer me. Why am I not sinking through the floor? Because, the, you see, am I exerting pressure on this floor, yes or no? Yes, yes 210 pounds of pressure on this floor. 
Is that too much to 